This is the Classic Baseball Broadcast Network, where we believe there is nothing like hearing about history from those who lived it. Listen to our full catalog of broadcasts at ClassicBaseballBroadcast.com. If you enjoy the podcast, please help me out and do one of three things. Follow, subscribe this podcast, and leave a review. It really helps. Share us with your baseball friends. Uh, let them know about us. Or jump over to members.thisdayinbaseball.com. Join our email list, community, and our family of baseball podcasts. Here are the lineups for today's game. The Los Angeles Dodgers will have Maury Wills playing short and leading off. Jim Gilliam will be at second base batting second. Willie Davis in center field hitting number three. Tommy Davis playing third base and batting cleanup. Ron Fairley at first base hitting number five. Frank Howard in left field hitting sixth. Duke Snyder in right field hitting seventh. Johnny Roseboro behind the plate batting eighth. And on the mound and batting ninth for the Dodgers, southpaw Pete Rickert. R-I-C-H-E-R-T. The New York Mets will have Richie Ashburn in right field to lead off. Charlie Neal at shortstop, batting second. Felix Mantilla playing third and hitting third. Frank Thomas in left field, batting cleanup. Joe Christopher in center field, hitting number five. Marv Thronberry will be at first base, batting sixth. Rod Keneal playing second base, hitting seventh. Joe Pignatano behind the plate, batting eighth. And on the mound at hitting ninth, Craig Anderson. The umpires, Dusty Boggess behind the plate, Mel Steiner and Stan Landis on the bases. And right now, the three men in blue are getting together with Captain Duke Snyder of the Dodgers, manager Casey Stengel of the New York Mets. The leadoff hitter in the game will be Maury Wells. Dodgers putting in their final New York appearance of the baseball season. Craig Anderson on the mound this afternoon. Craig took a lead and pitched a strong ball game his last time out going into the eighth inning. A game that the Pirates rallied to win by scoring four in the ninth inning. Three of the four were unearned. Craig did not figure in the decision. Now little Maury Will, switch batter, stepping in to lead off against Craig Anderson. Maury hitting at 283 on the year. Craig Anderson into his windup, and the game is underway with a sidearm fast ball over for a call strike one. Dodgers will be working a left-hander, young Pete Rickard, who has a real live arm and throws a blazing fastball. A little bit low, Maury Wells lays off, and the count is even. One ball, one strike. Felix Mantilla in close at third, and the pitch thrown is outside and low. Ball two, two and one. Greg Malevi on the lines at first, and Pete Reeser coaching at third. Leo DeRocher suffered a violent reaction to a penicillin shot just before the opener of this series. Leo is feeling fine now. Swing and a miss, and the count is even at two and two. Leo will be at the ballpark today watching today's game. His doctor does not want him to be in uniform as yet. And he'll be returning to the West Coast with the Dodgers. Inside and high to Maury Wills. It's ball three, a full count, three and two. Now the payoff pitch to Maury Wills. Inside of the knees, ball four. Now Jim Gilliam stepping in. Gilliam a switch batter hitting left against right-hander Craig Anderson. Yesterday, a big day for Gilliam. He had four for four, including a home run. He also drew a walk. He hiked his batting average to 284. There goes Wells. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. The peg the second to slide. Page and steals the base. His 70th stolen base of the year. Well, not since 1915, when Ty Cobb set the famous record of 96 stolen bases. Has any major league player stolen as many as 70 bases? Maury now is 10 behind the all-time National League record of 80, set by Bob Fisher back in 1910. Now the pitch on the way. Inside of the knees, one ball, one strike. 
Now Craig Anderson up in pitching position. Checks the runner. In comes the pitch to Gilliam. It's bounced foul. No play. One ball, two strikes. Barry Wells drew a walk leading off in the ball game and immediately stole second. He stole on the first pitch. Pitching one and two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. One away and one on. The hitter coming up is Willie Davis. Willie hitting 302 with 20 home runs and 77 runs batted in. Lightning fast left hand hitter. Fans deep in the batter's box, feet close together. Here's the pitch on the way. And he lets it go. It's outside. Ball one. Well, he has an unusual batting style. He stands feet close together, deep in the batter's box. And he holds that bat about belt high. You watch him hit, you'd figure he'd have to have a hitch in his swing. But he doesn't. Here's the pitch thrown, a ground ball on the right side. Keneal to his left, he's up with it. Throws to Thronberry, in time for Willie. Moving on to third goes Mari Wills. Now there are two away. Mari Wills moving to third and Tommy Davis coming up. Frank Robinson leads the National League in batting. Frank hitting 345 and Tommy Davis, number two. Tommy hitting at 342. Tommy Davis, right-hand hitter. Mets play him straight away. Line drive, base hit, going to left field. Ari Wills comes in to score, and the Dodgers take the lead, one to nothing. For Tommy Davis is 124th run batted in. Frank Robinson of the Reds, who has been so hot, has been gaining rapidly and runs batted in on Tommy Davis. Robinson now has 118. Tommy Davis, the major league leader, 124. Now the hitter is Ron Fairley. He has been real poison to the Mets. Ball one, Fairley takes. Against the New York Mets, Ron Fairley is hitting 464. Now Craig Anderson watches Tommy Davis. He's running the pitch. Ground ball hit down toward the hole, fielded by Rod Keneal. Rod takes the first, the side is out. Keneal had good defensive position on Ron Fairley. He was playing him over toward the hole on the right side of the infield and was able to move over fairly easily to handle the ground ball in the hole. One run, one hit. No errors, one left on. In the middle of the first, the score, Dodgers won, and the Mets coming to bat. Ask any manager in the circuit, and I'm sure he'll agree, the true test of a good hitter is his batting average against the A's pitchers around the league. And top flight competition is the true test of a cigarette, too. And that's why we say, smoke all seven leading filler cigarettes. You'll find some taste too strong, like they didn't have a filler at all. And others taste too light. They take all the fun and flavor out of smoking. But I'll bet dollars to donuts your taste will tell you Viceroy bats 1,000 against all comers because Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's Viceroy and the familiar soft pack or the exclusive new slide top case. You've heard about the filter on this cigarette, but the Viceroy taste is the best thing yet. He means Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Now Richie Ashburn will be leading off against Pete Rickard. Two years ago, Pete Rickard set a strikeout record in the Southern League. Last year, he was bothered by arm trouble. And early in May of this year, facing the St. Louis Cardinals and pitching to Bill White, he threw a fastball and his arm popped. You could hear it all over the ballpark and it sent him to the sidelines for over two months with a muscle pull. 
Young left-hander with a real good fastball. Inside and high to Richie Ashburn, ball one. Rickard, a New York boy, and his mother is here watching him pitch this afternoon, as well as his fiance. Now Rickard out of the windup delivers. A line smash to short, taken on a half by Maury Wells. The long throw out of first. Good defensive play by little Maury Wills. He made a backhand play of a hot low smash hit toward the hole. One away and nobody on. Charlie Neal will bat against Pete Rickard. Charlie batting 246, 11 home runs and 46 runs batted in. Now Pete Rickard looking in to take his sign from Johnny Roseboro. One out, nobody on. Pitch to Neal. He holds up on the swing. And it's outside. One ball, no strikes. The Dodgers are set up defensively with Ron Fairley playing first base. Jim Gilliam at second. Maury Wells at short. And Tommy Davis at third. Foul ball back upstairs. No play. One ball, one strike. In the outfield, Frank Howard playing left field. Willie Davis in center. And around in right field, Duke Snyder. Roseboro behind the plate with Pete Rickard on the mound. Now Rickard out of his windup. Here's the pitch. A ground ball bounced to shortstop. Maury Wills comes in. He's up with it. Pegs on to Fairley. Two men down. The number three hitter in the batting order for the Mets, Felix Mantilla, batting at 279. Over the last 12 ball games, Felix has hit 327. Dodgers lead one to nothing. And the pitch thrown to Mantilla is a curve on the inside corner for a call strike. Have a wind up and pitch by Rickard, a swing and a foul tip. Count strike two on Felix Mantilla. Frank Thomas on deck and then Joe Christopher. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. And Cincinnati has an 8-7 to seven game edge on the Dodgers. In the first inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. At the end of one inning, the score, the Dodgers won and the Mets nothing. Remember, while the Mets are away, tickets will be on sale at the advanced sale window of the 8th Avenue side here at the Polo Grounds. And also, for your added convenience at Grand Central Station, near the 42nd and Vanderbilt ramp and the Long Island waiting room of the Penn Station. Ticket reservations for all future games of the New York Mets may also be made at all Howard Close stores in the greater New York area. Fans, line up a Viceroy and find out what we mean when we say Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Now Frank Howard will lead off for the Dodgers in the top half of the second inning. Well, he drew the oohs and the ahs of the early crowd at the polo grounds today when during batting practice he smacked one up in the center field bleachers. It was quite a wallop, I want to tell you. On the fly, it cleared the green batter's eye in the corner of the left center field bleachers. Howard hitting 308 with 22 home runs. And 90 runs batted in. Now Craig Anderson winds the pitch on the way. A curve, swung and missed, rank one. But he takes that big swing and an off-speed pitch. Probably cools off and seated for 20 rows behind him. He really takes a ripple. Now Craig winds and pitches. Outside and low. One ball, one strike. One delivery, bounce foul on the ground, coming right straight back, no play. Yeah. 
The end of two innings now in Philadelphia. Giants three. The Phillies one. Phillies scored a run in their half of the second inning. Jack Sanford against Art Mahaffey. Houston nothing. Cincinnati nothing at the end of one inning. First game of a doubleheader. Now the pitch to Howard. He leans in and takes. Outside and low. Two balls and two strikes. Here are the warm-ups in Wrigley Field. Denny LaMaster will hurdle for Milwaukee. Dick Ellsworth for the Chicago Cubs. Pittsburgh nothing, St. Louis nothing at the end of one. Harvey Haddix against Ray Washburn. Pitching two and two. Another off-speed breaking pitch is outside and low. And we have a full count, three and two. Yankees scored a run off Robin Roberts in the top of the second. At the end of an inning and a half, New York one, Baltimore nothing. Cleveland two, Red Sox nothing at the end of two and a half. First game of a doubleheader. Warm-ups for the first game at Detroit. Dave Stenhouse for Washington against Jim Budding. Call strike, a beauty on the outside corner, and Howard is caught looking. Strikeout number two for Craig Anderson. Brings up Duke Snyder. Duke, a 15-year veteran with 387 Major League home runs. Snyder hitting at 267. Beautiful day and a good ball game starting. Swing and a miss by Snyder. He really gave that one a ripple. Breaking ball, it was in on the fifth. Johnny Roseboro out of the on-deck circle. Change up, hit on the ground down the first baseline. One-handed by Marv Thronberry. He makes the unassisted play, retiring Snyder. Two men away. Now there are two away. Nobody on. Top half of the second, and the hitter will be Johnny Roseboro. The Dodgers lead one to nothing. They scored in the first, but Maury Wills drew a walk. Wills then stole second, his 70th stolen base of the year. He moved to third on a ground ball and came in to score on a run scoring hit by Tommy Davis. Now Roseboro batting. Outside it's ball one. Johnny Roseboro, left hand hitter, batting at 250. He's been trying to fight his way out of a tough batting slump. Infield playing him deep and pulled around toward right. Pignatano is setting up the target, and he's hit by the pitch. That one, a breaking ball, got away from Craig Anderson and struck the batter, Jenny Roseboro, in the leg, so he goes down to first base. That will bring up Pete Rickard. Pete was born in Mineola, Long Island, New York, but he now makes his home in Floral Park, New York. So Pete's mother is here to watch him play this afternoon and also his fiance on hand. Two down, Johnny Roseboro on first. Rickard hitting left-handed against Craig Anderson. Now Anderson makes the one-second stop. Around comes the arm. Ground ball back to the mound. Taken easily by Craig. He fires the first. The side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the score of the Los Angeles Dodgers won and the New York Mets nothing. Right now, before Frank Thomas leads off the home second, let's pause for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, 810 on your dial, where you can hear all the games of the New York Mets. The time now is 24 minutes before 3 o'clock. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer from the Polo Grounds. And the Mets now will have Frank Thomas coming up against Pete Ricker. regular Pony League season is all over and it's a job well done by the New York Mets farm team in the Pony League the Auburn Mets the Mets in their first year as a baseball organization and the Auburn Mets finished in third place in the Pony League and now go into the playoffs so all of us want to wish Dick Cole's club the very best of luck in the Pony League playoffs now 
Frank Thomas standing upright, close to the plate, pitched by Rickard. A drive foul. Hit hard and into the crowd down the left field line. out of his windup, delivers a smash for a base hit through the hole to left field. Frank Howard firing the ball back in to Mari Will, and Thomas leads it off with a single. That'll bring up Mara Thronder. Farm club of the New York Mets in the Midwest League at Quincy, Illinois. Has enjoyed a good year, and it appears that they're going to finish second or third. Crossed behind the plate as the crowd starts to stir around now. Pitch thrown by the left-hander is taken by Joe Christopher, strike one. Christopher hitting with Thronberry on deck. Now Thomas takes his lead off first base, nobody out. Down comes the arm. He's around as if the bunt doesn't offer at it. It's off the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Dodgers lead one to nothing. They manufactured a run in the opening inning. When Maury Wells drew a walk, stole second, took third on a ground ball, and scored on a single to left by Tommy Davis. Ron Fairley holding against the runner. The 1-1 one, one pitch. And that's over for a call strike to Joe Christopher. One ball, two strikes. Mets will be busy in baseball the entire year. The Mets will have a club in the Florida Instructional League this winter. Pitching one and two. It's a blazing fastball on the outside corner. Strike three call. That was a real hummer thrown by Pete Rickard. He doubts that young Pete Rickard has overcome his arm difficulties were certainly made clear on that last fastball he threw. It was a real blazing fastball. No doubt about it. His arm is all right. Now Mara Thronberry batting against Pete Rickard. Rickard getting his second strikeout. He starts him off with a slow breaking pitch that's outside. One ball, no strike. Pete Rickard in 48 innings has struck out 46 men. And two years ago, down in the Southern League, he broke a 70-year-old strikeout record. He struck out 250 in 225 innings. Ground ball hit hard, a base hit going to right field by Mara Thronberry. Thomas around second on his way to third. The peg by Snyder is taken at second base. Runners on first and third. getting around on Pete Rickard and he really pulled and hit that one hard a ground shot into right field for a clean base hit now the hitter is Rod Keneal Mets now have a tying run Frank Thomas on third Mara Thronberry on first one man out bottom half of the second Dodgers lead one to nothing Hitting at 275. Hits a smash on the ground is short. Rolls to Gilliam. They have one. Gilliam the first. Double play to the down the side. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on. At the end of two innings, the score, the Los Angeles Dodgers won, and the New York Mets nothing. Mets hit young Pete Rickard hard in the last half of the second. Ball hit by Rod Keneal was hit hard, but it was tailor-made for the double play hit right at little Mari Wills, the Dodgers shortstop.
In the National League, at the end of two, Giants three, Phillies one. Orlando Cepeda hit a two-run homer his 30th of the year. He's now hit six in his last six ball games. And that's Jack Sanford against Art Mahaffey, both trying for win number 18. Houston nothing, Cincinnati nothing at the end of one. Right now, Maury Wells comes out to lead off as we go along to the third inning. And all dressed up in his Sunday finery and ready to paint the word picture for you, our Mr. Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob. Maury Wills batting from the left-hand side. He's a switch hitter, batting left-handed against the right-hander, Craig Anderson. Anderson, so far, through two innings, has given one run, allowed only one hit, struck out two, and walked one. There's the first pitch to Wills, hit sharply down to the first baseman, Goldberg. He turns, goes to the pitch, and covering lane at Wills' is safe. with his speed stole that one he just outran Greg Anderson who was covering at first base this home boy made the good play a base hit for Will that's the second time he's been on he scored the only run of the game walking in the first inning and stealing second base and he was driven in from third base by Tommy Davis so no one out and Jim Gilliam batting from the left hand side the batter Jim batting 284 struck out his first time up Wills came out in the game at 283. Wills stolen base is 70th. Now he draws the throw at first base, gets back safely. No one in the history of the National League except one man has stolen more bases than Maury Wills. That was Bob Besher. He picked up 80. Wills dives back in again as Craig Anderson comes over. Wills, his first time on base, went on the very first pitch and stole it. Right on Craig Anderson, he had a tremendous jump. Now Anderson with two quick throws to first base before pitching one ball to Gilliam. Wills moving up again, Anderson holding, and comes back to the plate. It's low for ball one. Dodgers have stolen 111 bases in 130 games this year. Wills picking up 70. throw to first base as Will starts to leave but he gets back 1-0 count on Jim Gilliam Will anxious to go goes and the pitch is through there to throw to second base a little bit high and Will's is safe on base two times in this game and two stolen bases. That's number 71, his 11th stolen base in his last 10 games. That throw by Pignatano, a high throw, otherwise they would have made him an out victim. But Neal taking the throw had to go high in the air to get it and then pull it down and that gave Wells time to slide in. 2-0 count now. And Anderson's next pitch to Gilliam outside, ball three. That makes it 3-0 and all with Willie Davis in the on-deck circle. Dodgers lead 1-0, they scored in the first. Both clubs with two hits. Now Anderson set for the 3-0 pitch to Gilliam. Comes back to the plate with a strike for strike one. against the Dodgers here in the Polo Grounds. One win and seven losses. At Dodger Stadium, they won one and lost eight. So on the year, they won two out of 17. This is the final game of the year between these two clubs. That's currently winning three of their last five. Now the 3-1 pitch to Gilliam. It's inside ball four. Gilliam gets first base free, and now the Dodgers, with no one out, runners at first and second. And the batter coming up, Willie Davis, talking to Walt Alston before coming into the batter's box. Alston evidently telling him directly, rather than flashing the signs to the third base coach, what he actually wants done in this situation. 
He could be bunting. Dodgers looking for runs with no one out. The on-deck batter, Tommy Davis, he leads the National League and runs batted in. Theo DeRocher at the park, but not in uniform. And Pete Reeser coaching at third base. And Leo Spot at first base. Greg Malevy. Maury Wills at second base. At first base, Jim Gilliam. And the first baseman and third baseman for the Mets looking for the bunt play. Wally Davis, left hand batting center fielder, hitting 302. Now the hitter. And Craig Anderson staring for the sign, just finally backs off. He wants another set. Wally Davis bounced to second base his first time up. Pignatano now asking Anderson what he wants to throw, now going out to the mound to talk to him. Dodgers one run and two hits. The Mets have no runs and two hits. Top of the third inning. Dodgers all set to go now, waiting for Anderson to get the sign. He's taking it now from Pignatano. And the first pitch to Davis. A fastball bunted down to third base. It's a good bunt. It goes to the base end. was punted down third base way and Felix Mandia never broke for the ball at all. He went right to the back. Greg Anderson coming off the mound had no chance to get to it and the two runners advance as Willie Davis picked up a base hit on a bunt. So the bases are loaded. The batter now, Tommy Davis. Bases loaded, no one out. Tommy Davis, who singled in the only run of the game, now in the batter's box for the second time. He's batting 342 plus. Tommy Davis, five hits and ten times up in this series, and even 500. Had a home run yesterday to run his total at 21. Now the windup and the delivery to Tommy. A bouncing ball to short. Charlie Knee over up with a two second base in time to first place and double play. And scoring on the double play, number 138 for the Mets, Maury Wills. The Dodgers now lead 2 nothing, but the Mets pick up two outs. Going to third base on the play, Jim Gilliam. And the batter is Ron Fairley. Ron has hit five home runs in the yearly action here in his first season in the polo ground. He is two for six in this series. Now Anderson with the sign into the windup and the 1-0 pitch. Curveball that's thrown and blocked by the catcher, Joe Pignatano, and Ron Fairley leans over, picks up the ball, and tosses it to the umpire to take a look. He looks and throws it out of the game. Two balls and no strikes. The on-deck batter, Frank Howard. to Ron Fairley as Anderson goes back to work and he throws a fastball hit sharply down to Rod Cadeal he's up with the ball tosses overhand the first base to retire the side in the inning the Dodgers score one run on two hits a stolen base by Maury Wills no errors and one man left on and the score at the end of two and a half innings of play the Dodgers two the Mets nothing Bottom half of the third inning, the score two to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. And coming up now for the Mets, Joe Pignatano for the first time. It'll be Pignatano, Anderson, and Ashburn stacked up against the left-hander, Pete Rickard. Pete threw two innings, has struck out two, given up two hits, and walked no one. His strikeout. Running his total of strikeout, two. 48 and 48 innings of work here this year. He has a record of two wins and three losses. Pignatano, right-hand batting catcher, hitting 256, and his first pitch is low for ball one. Joe is oh in the home run department. He has none. He has driven in two runs for the Mets. One old count as the left-hander comes back to the plate. Fastball popped up in the air, right down the left field line. Maury Wills easing over by the foul line, now in foul territory, and he puts it away. Will's not sure where the box seats were, and he made a one-hand grab. He had an easier play. He made it a little bit hard. No one out, and the batter now, Craig Anderson. Craig bats from the right-hand side, hitting 083. Ram 
Francisco has scored another run in the top of the fourth. They lead Philadelphia now 6-1. to one. Ron Sanford, Jack Sanford, looking for his 18th against Art Mahaffey. There's the first pitch to the right-hand batter, Anderson. Strike one call. Houston, Cincinnati, no score at the end of three. Brunette against Maloney. One strike pitch to Craig. A check in the swing just in time. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Cincinnati playing two today. Milwaukee at Chicago in the single game. No score after one and a half. A master against Ellsworth. Pitch back to Anderson outside. A fastball. Two balls and one strike. Dodgers two. Mets nothing. Pittsburgh four. St. Louis nothing in the first of two. At the end of two and a half. Haddix against Deliva now. Washburn was the starter for the Cardinals. Two balls and one strike to Craig Anderson. And the next pitch is a strike call. A fastball to knee. Two and two. Baltimore two. Yankees one at the end of four. Whitey Ford against Roberts. Two veteran great pitchers. That's a single game. Now the 2-2 pitch to Anderson. A fastball. Taken for strike three. So Pete Rickard keeping his total at the same at the start of the game. A strikeout per inning. That's number 49 in 49 innings. Rickard tied three records in his first appearance in the big leagues. His first one, he struck out six batters in a row to equal Carl Spooner's record set for the Dodgers back in 54. And he struck out four in one inning. That was his second record that he equaled. First pitch to Richie Ashburn. Line over the third base bag in fair territory. He's going for two. And the ball gets away from Frank Howard, making the journey easy. So Richie Ashburn, a base hit, a double down the left field line. And now the Mets have the time run coming to the plate. It's Charlie Neal. Hit number three off of the left-hander. And Charlie Neal, who bounced out the short, coming up for the second time. He's batting 246, right hand batting shortstop. Richie Ashburn out at second base. He started the game with a 309 average. Now one for two in this game. He bounced the short and doubles. And Ricker now into the stretch position. And his first pitch to Neal, a fastball, swung on and missed, strike one. Rickard is fast. And he struck out six consecutive batters to tie a major league record for a relief pitcher. That record was set back in 61 by Jack Myers for Philadelphia. That was in his debut. Now working in his 11th major league game. One strike pitch, swung on and missed, another fastball, strike two. Rickard was bothered by a sore arm early in the year and sent out to Omaha. And when Sandy Koufax came up with the bad finger, Rickard was pulled back in. And he's done a good job. Last time out, he defeated the Phils 5-1. to Pete Rickard looking for the sign, now into the stretch position. And the two-strike pitch. Fastball it is over, called strike three. That retires the side, the fourth strikeout for Rickard. And in the inning, the Mets no runs on one hit. There were no errors, one man left. And the score, at the end of three innings of play, the Dodgers two, the Mets nothing. Well, there's still plenty of action left on the Major League schedule. Mets will have 12 games left at the Polar Grounds. In the month of September, they leave town on Tuesday to play in Philadelphia. Have a series with Philadelphia, then St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Houston returning to the Polar Ground. They'll open up against Milwaukee, and then the Cincinnati Reds come in for three vital games. Vital for the Cincinnati Reds. You know, Ryan Gold goes good anytime, but especially on a day like today. If you want to stay cool and refreshed and enjoy the game a little bit more, why not open up or order up a can or bottle of refreshing... Wine Gold Extra Dry. Moving now to the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Frank Howard as the leadoff man against Greg Anderson. Dodgers lead 2-0. Howard batting for the second time. He was called out 
Anderson getting Howard on a curveball. It's first time up. Howard batting 308. Right hand batting left fielder. And the first pitch is a sidearm curve that's outside. Ball one. Howard tremendously big. Six foot seven. 250 pounds. All muscle. He's a strong man. There's a changeup inside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Frank with 22 home runs and 90 runs batted in. Batting practice in the pregame workouts. He hit one into the center field bleachers. Really drew the odds from the crowd. Now Anderson with a 2-0 pitch. A foul ball will take this opportunity now to pause for station identification. You're tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Mets station. The time, five minutes past three. Ralph Geiner along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from the Polo Grounds. 2 nothing Dodgers, top of the fourth. Howard leading off. And the next pitch to the big fella inside for ball three. Three balls and one strike. After Howard, Duke Snyder and John Roseboro. Anderson back to work. And the 3-1 pitch, a slider that's on the outside corner right around the knees. A big swing and a miss for strike two. Anderson now picking the count up to 3-2 and two on Frank Howard. No one out, top of the fourth. And now the 3-2 pitch. Bounce foul, so the count will stay at three balls and two strikes. Dodgers scored their first run in the first inning when Maury Wells walked, stole second base, went to third when Willie Davis was out to second, then scored on a base hit to left field by Tommy Davis. They added one more in the third when Maury Wells beat out a base hit to first base. Craig Anderson actually laid in covering to give Wells a base hit. Then Wells stole his second base, his 71st, and scored on a double play later on. 3-2 pitch again, and it's just outside. Anderson missing by an eyelash for ball four. Howard started to go and held off just in time. That is walk number three in the game for the Dodgers, and it puts a runner at first base with no one out and brings up Duke Snyder. Duke was out the first base his first time up on the ground. Batting 267, left hand batting right fielder. The bouncing ball to second, a chance for two. Keneal up with it over to Neal, and he drops the ball. Charlie Neal in trying to get the ball away too soon, never got a hold of it, and dropped it as he went to throw. Safe at second base, on the air, Frank Howard, and at first base, Duke Snyder. Surefire double play if the throw had been completed in good time. Tomorrow, Throwberry. So now it's the Dodgers with runners at first and second, and no one out, and the batter is John Roseboro. John was hit by a change of pace his first time up. Batting at 250 with seven home runs and 44 runs batted in. Left hand batting catcher. On deck batter, the pitcher, Pete Rickard. So Craig Anderson here in the top of the fourth with his work cut out. He has no one out. And the first pitch to Roseboro, curveball, swung on a miss, strike one. John right over the top of the curve as it came in at the knees on the inside corner. One strike count, runners at first and second base. Dodgers leading 2-0. Anderson, a long look at the signs, now set. And the one-strike pitch. Again, the curve. This time, it's pulled foul for strike two. Anderson with good control, throwing the curveball in tight. 0-2 with no one out. This is Anderson's 40th game of the year, his 11th start. A 
Against L.A., he is 0-4 this year. Lifetime 0-5. Lifetime record, 7 wins and 16 losses. This year, he has 3 wins and 12 losses. His 3 wins coming in relief. Now the two-strike pitch to Roseboro. Hit hard right through the middle. Into center field, a base hit. Frank Howard scoring from second base. It's 3-0 now and going to third on the single by Roseboro, Duke Snyder. Dodgers lead 3-0. Rod Caneo moved over, almost got to that ball, but it snuck on through for a base hit for Roseboro. And it brings up the pitcher, Pete Rickard. The RBI for Roseboro is 45th of the year. Rickard bounced to the mound his first time up. He bats from the left-hand side, and Felix Mantia at third base moving in to guard against the bunt. Still no one out. A run in and runners at first and third. And Craig Anderson now in the stretch position. Thornberry charging. The runner goes. The pitch is swung on and missed. The throw to second base taken by Charlie Neal. But the slide by Roseboro, he is safe. So on the swinging strike, the Dodgers move a runner to second base and now have runners at second and third with no one out. And a one strike count of the pitcher. Four straight years, Roseboro has led the Major League catchers in stolen bases. Once with 11, twice with 7, and once with 6. Now the one-strike pitch, pitch to Richard is swung on a miss for strike two. That stolen base by Roseboro in this game, right here in this inning. His sixth of the year. Two strike count as Anderson goes back to work. Curveball swung on a miss, strike three. So Craig gets one out. That is his third strikeout, and now it's Maury Wills. Maury Wills, who has walked and singled, batting for the third time. He has scored two of the three runs in the game, the other scored by Frank Howard. Batting from the left-hand side. The infield now drawn in. And the first pitch to Wills outside. Ball one. Wills with two stolen bases in this game. Now with a total of 11 stolen bases in his last 10 games. And this game not over. Three against the Mets. In the series. Now Anderson into the windup and the 1 0 pitch to Wills fouled away. So the count now one ball, one strike. If Wills keeps up his current stolen base pace, he has a good chance to get up to 96, Ty Cobb's major league record. One ball, one strike, one man out. And the pitch by Anderson, bounced down to short. Charlie Neal coming up with the ball, has a play at the plate, and they have Snyder to run down. Pignatano now throwing to Mantia. He drops the ball, the throw back, and Pignatano drops the ball, and Snyder scores. Moving over to third base on the play, John Roseboro, and down to second, Maury Will. They give the air to Joe Pignatano, but it was a tough play for him. He threw the ball to Felix Mantia. Mantia dropped it. He had a play to tag out Duke Snyder. 
And as he dropped it, Snyder turned and went for home. A throw back to Pignatano. Got there just about the time that Snyder got there. And Joe Pignatano, in trying to tag Snyder before he went by, dropped the ball again. And now it's Junior Gilliam. He takes a strike. One strikeout with runners at second and third. The infield still in. One man out to score four nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Gilliam batting from the left hand side. Struck out and walked. And the next pitch to the left hand batter is. Outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Anderson working now with a 1-1 count and one man out. Top of the fourth inning, two runs in. And Gilliam again takes. It's inside, a curveball, two balls and one strike. and one strike four nothing Dodgers and Anderson back to work and the next pitch bounces in the dirt blocked by the catcher the runners hold it's now three and one And taking plenty of time. Infield in, John Roseboro at third base, Maury Wills at second. And one man out. And now the windup and the delivery to Gilliam bounced down towards the pitcher off his glove, picked up by Keneal, a throw to first base in time, and holding at third base on the play, John Roseboro. Give Craig Anderson an assist on the play. One, four, three, and it brings up now with two outs, Willie Davis. Break for the Mets that Roseboro did not try to score in the play. Runner still at second and third. Willie Davis with a bunt single. And two times up. Left hand batting center fielder. Batting the 302. Infield move back. Third baseman even with the bag. And the first pitch is skizzled off the end of the bat. It'll be a base hit. Johnny Neal goes over to backhand it to keep it in the infield. And scoring on the blooper base hit is John Roseboro. Moving over to third base, Maury Wills. And the score now, five to nothing. Three runs in that time. One right off the end of the bat by Mantia and Charlie Neal had plenty of time to get to it but no chance to make a throw as the ball is hit so slowly so Davis now without getting the ball out of the infield has picked up two hits driven in one run and now the batter is Tommy Davis eighth batter to bat here in the top of the fourth right hand batting third baseman And a throw to first base. Not in time as Willie Davis dives back in. Two fast men on the bases. Maury Wills at third. Willie Davis at first. Willie Davis with 29 stolen bases. Second in the major league. He goes and the pitch is hit deep to left field. Moving back is Thomas on the warning track. Way back there. Waiting and he makes the catch. In the inning, the Dodgers pick up three runs on two base hits, one error, and two men left on. Make it two errors, and two men left on, and the score at the end of three and a half. The Dodgers five, the Mets nothing. You know, everybody's got favorites. 
favorite foods, favorite sports, and favorite girls. Before the season began, everybody had their favorite pick to win the pennant. And now all over New York, people are talking about their favorite candidate for Miss Rheingold 1963. Who will be next year's Miss Rheingold? That's up to you. Your votes will decide the winner. So next time you're ordering Rheingold Extra Dry at any one of the 45,000 stores and taverns that sell New York's favorite beer, drop in a vote or two for your favorite candidate at the familiar Rheingold ballot box. And no matter who your favorite is, Prue, Chris, Loretta, Beverly, Eileen, or Carol, enjoy a glass of Rheingold Extra Dry, the one beer that year after year has been chosen favorite of New Yorkers all over town. Have a sip of Rheingold's clean, clear, bright taste, and you'll join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. <whistles> Moving out of the bottom half of the fourth inning, the Dodgers leading five to nothing. They have five runs on five hits. The Mets have made two errors to help them along, and also a couple of errors that didn't show in the box score. And the batter now coming up, Felix Mantia. It'll be Mantia, Thomas, and Christopher against Pete Rickard, looking for his third victory of the year. Felix struck out swinging his first time up, and the first pitch to the right-hand batter is full foul, strike one. Left-hander back to work, and the one-strike pitch, a curveball, it's pulled foul, strike two. Rickett, through three innings, has given up no run. Three base hits, and struck out four. He has now struck out 50 batters in 49 innings. Here's the two-strike pitch. It's high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. record working with three days rest last worked on August 22nd and he comes back with a fastball that is just outside two balls and two strikes two and two to Felix Mantia the next pitch a curveball pulled down to the third baseman Tommy Davis he is up with the ball throws overhand to first base just in time Felix Mantia out, and now Frank Thomas. Frank lined a single to left field his first time up. One for one, betting 271. Right hand batting left fielder, chased way back in left field by Tommy Davis in the last inning. And he takes the first pitch low, ball one. Thomas right on top of the plate. No one can back him off. And the 1-0 pitch, a let up. Swung on and missed for strike one. Good change of pace by record down around the knees. To the count now, one ball and one strike. Rickard into the windup and delivers. It's a fastball through at the knees for strike two. The one-two pitch to Thomas. Again, the change of pace, this time outside. Two balls and two strikes. with a sign, record reading. And the 2-2 pitch, fastball, right on through for strike three. Thomas now talking to home plate umpire, Stan Landis. And that is the fifth strikeout for Pete Rickard. Pete was born in Mineola, New York. He now lives in Foral Park, only 22 years of age. 
5'11 on the mound, 165 pounds. He throws hard. And now with two out, the score of 5-0. The Dodger way, it's Joe Christopher. Right hand batting center fielder. And he takes a curve, low for ball one. Joe has called out on strikes his first time up. He is 0 for 1. Rickard has struck out at least one each inning. And he comes back with a fastball inside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Last year, pitching for Spokane, he had five wins and ten losses. He's been bothered off and on with arm trouble. Here before at Atlanta, he won 19 to lead the league and lost nine. Now the 2-0 pitch, uh, fastball for strike one. Rickard is sort of a short arm pitcher. He doesn't have a real full motion with the arm, but it's fast. Throws a little like Billy Pierce used to throw. Fastball again, hit down to Jim Gilliam at second base. He makes the play to first in time, and that does it. Three turned away in a row by Pete Rickard, and the score at the end of four innings of play. The Dodgers five, the Mets nothing. And now to tell you all about the Milwaukee game coming up here at the Polo Grounds in the next home stand, and also to give you the scores is Bob Murphy. All right, Ralph, the Milwaukee Braves will be coming in for a single game to open the next homestand for the New York Mets, and it will be their final homestand of the year. That will be... Beg your pardon, that will be on the 10th of September. And on the next homestand, Freddie Hutchinson Cincinnati Reds will be in for a big weekend series on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of September. Right now, the Cincinnati Reds, the hottest thing in baseball, they've won 32 of their last 40 ball games. They've really come from out of nowhere, the old saying in baseball that the team on top on July 4th will win the pennant. The Reds may make a shambles out of it the way they're going. Back on the 4th of July, they were not only not in first place, but they were about 11 games out. This afternoon, at the end of five innings, Houston leading Cincinnati 2 to nothing. George Brunette against Jim Maloney. At the end of five and a half, San Francisco six, Philadelphia one. Jack Sanford on the mound for the Giants. Jim Owens has relieved Doug Mahaffey. Home runs by Orlando Cepeda, his 30th of the year, and by Felipe Lou. Chicago leading Milwaukee one to nothing at the end of three on a home run by Dick Bertel. Denny LeMaster against Dick Ellsworth. Pittsburgh four, St. Louis one after four and a half. Harvey Haddix for the Bucks. Shan's on in relief now for St. Louis. Bill Burden had a two-run homer. Now Ron Fairley leading off as we go into the fifth inning and the pitch is taken. One ball, no strikes. Fairley 0 for 2 this afternoon. They're in the last of the seventh inning in Baltimore. The Orioles leading the Yankees 2-1. to one. Whitey Ford dueling Robin Roberts. All three runs coming in on home runs. Way inside by Craig Anderson. One and one. On Ron Fairley. The game in Baltimore, Tony Kubek homered in the second, nobody on. And Brooks Robinson and Jim Gentile have homered for the Birds, nobody on. Incidentally, the great third baseman of the Baltimore Orioles, Brooks Robinson, had 16 hits in his last 21 times at bat going into that game today. Cleveland six, the Red Sox one at the end of five. Kansas City nothing, Minnesota nothing at the end of two and a half. Detroit two, Washington one at the end of three and a half. Line drive hit foul down the right, right field line by Ron Fairley. Frank Howard on deck and then Duke Snyder. Dodgers lead five to nothing. They scored one in the first, one in the third, and three in the fourth inning. Now Anderson out of his windup, inside and high, two balls and two strikes. 
Craig Anderson had to weather a rough inning in the fourth when the Dodgers scored their three runs. The Dodgers had about six outs in the inning. Mitz had a shot at a double play ball, but a throw was dropped. They had a runner hung up in a rundown between third and home, and a throw was dropped. Pitching two and two. Ground ball lashed down the first baseline. Thornberry up with it. He'll make the unassisted play retiring Ron Fairley. Now before Frank Howard steps in to hit, we'll step out for station identification. You are tuned to WGY Schenectady, your New York Mets station. The time is now 3.30, the temperature 83 degrees. Pleasant 80 degrees. One away and nobody on. Frank Howard facing Craig Anderson. Howard took a call, third strike in the second. He drew a walk in the fourth inning and later scored. Outside and low, it's ball one. During batting practice, he popped one into the center field bleachers. Craig Anderson checking with Joe Pignatano. Left side of the infield, back very deep for Howard. Charlie Neal playing almost on the rim of the outfield grass, and Mantilla deep behind the bag at third. Now Anderson decides to step off. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Dodgers lead five to nothing. Foul ball hit down the third baseline. No play. Johnny Mack Stadium, the Philadelphia Phillies scored three runs in the last half of the sixth inning. And now at the end of six, the score, Giants six and the Phillies four. Houston out in the sixth inning at the end of five and a half. Houston two, Cincinnati nothing. The one-one pitch to Howard, a swing and a miss on a singing fastball. One ball, two strikes. Craig Anderson relies on a good sinker. He turns it over. It looks almost like a curveball. And when that good sinker is working for him, he makes the hitters hit that ball in the ground. One away, nobody on. Now Anderson over the head. Down comes the arm. Bounce foul off the shin guard of Joe Pignatano. Count one ball and two strikes. Rain Gold Extra Dry, your radio host. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. Following today, our next broadcast will be from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia with the Twilight Night doubleheader on Tuesday evening. Broadcast time Tuesday night from Philadelphia will be 6 p.m. Now Anderson cranks up, delivers. Breaking ball in the dirt out in front of the plate. And the count is even on Frank Howard, two and two. The Dodgers scored three runs in the fourth inning without getting a ball past the infield. Other than the ball hit by Johnny Roseboro, a ground single just beyond the reach of Rod Keneal. ball, no play. Even count two and two on big Frank Howard. Howard hitting at 308. 0 for 1 this afternoon. Mets really play him deep. He has a world of power. The 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a bad pitch. A breaking ball that was in the dirt. Greg Anderson really fooled Howard with his motion that time. He had him swinging at the motion. Two down, nobody on. Duke Snyder coming up. Duke has grounded out and reached on a force play. Later scored a run in the last inning. 
Dodgers out in front, five to nothing. Ball one, low and inside. Snyder hitting at 267. Duke a lifetime 300 hitter after 15 years. 387 lifetime home runs. They play him deep around the right. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike on Duke Snyder. Los Angeles, five runs, five hits, no errors. New York, no runs, three hits, and two errors. Now Craig Anderson over the head, down comes the arm, and his fastball is taken low. Ball two, two and one. Two and one count on Duke Snyder. Next pitch on the way. Ground ball hit hard. Keneal to his left. Rod is up with it. Pegs from the outfield. Graff in time for the out. Three up and three set aside by Craig Anderson in the top of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half innings to score. The Dodgers five and the New York Mets nothing. Musicians play it. People say it. My beer is Rheingold the dry beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, sir, dry tells you Rain Gold has a brisk, bright, clean taste all its own. Discover the difference dry makes. Pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rain Gold Extra Dry. Enjoy it along with the ball game. Thronberry facing Pete Rickard. Last half of the fifth inning. Marv hit a hard shot into right field for a clean base hit. It's only time up. Mets have been held to three hits over four innings by the hard-throwing young left-hander. Pitch by Rickard is inside and high, and Marv had to lean away. One ball, no strike. Now Pete Rickard. As a sign from Johnny Roseville, the left-hander winds and pitches a swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Boy, you can see how Pete Rickard would strike out so many hitters. He really throws that ball. Real good fastball. And a fast-breaking curveball. A 1-1 pitch. Inside of the letters, a ball two, two and one. Right in there for a call strike, two and two. Down is even, two and two on Thornberry. Nobody on, nobody out. We're in the last half of inning number five. The wind up and pitch by Rickard, a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Ball dropped by Roseboro. He throws on down to first in time. So that's strikeout number six in five and a third for Pete Rickard. Rod Keneal, one out, nobody on. Rod bounced into a double play his first time up on a hard grounder right at the shortstop, Maury Wills. Pitch taken outside and high. It's one ball, no strikes. Now the pitch on the way, a swing and a miss at a fastball. One ball, one strike. Dodgers, almost to a man, have been very high on young Pete Rickard. They say he's been pitching as well 
That's just about anybody on the staff except for Don Drysdale. The one-one delivery. Rod drives the bunny's way on. It goes foul. One ball and two strikes. So Pete Rickard is a young man with a good arm and a lot of responsibility right now, having taken over for the ailing Sandy Koufax. Sandy was off to a fabulous year when he had the misfortune to be sent to the sidelines with circulation problems in his finger. Sandy was 14 and 5. Pitching one and two. Change up, hit on the ground to short. Mari Wills comes in. He's up with it. Takes the fairly in time for the out. Now there are two away in the last half of inning number five, and the batter will be Joe Pignatano. Joe fouled out to Mari Wills, who went across the line to make the catch in the third inning. Pete Rickard now has retired six in a row. Tander cranks up, fires. He starts him off with a curve, but it breaks low. One ball and no strikes. Giants six and the Phillies four at the end of six. Sanford trying for his 18th. Mahaffey started for the Phillies, but he's out of there for Owens. Off the outside corner, ball two, two and nothing. And the Cincinnati Reds face the prospect of being forced to come from behind if they are to keep their winning streak going. They're trailing Houston 2 0 at the end of five and a half. Two O delivery. Outside and high. Ball three. Three and nothing. in there for a call strike, three and one. Three and one on Joe Pignatano. Two outs, nobody on, last half of the fifth inning. Dodgers out in front, five to nothing. It's thrown by Rickert, a call strike on the inside corner. Pignatano had bluffed that step toward first, but Dusty Bogus brings him back. Payoff pitch to Pignatano, a drive to right center field. It's sinking in a base hit. Grabbed on a hop by Duke Snyder. Pignatano takes the turn and he's on with a hard hit single into right center. Anderson hitting. Craig batting for the second time. He was called out on strikes his first time up. Ball one. Base hit by Pignatano, the fourth in the game off Pete Rickard. A smash hit foul down the right field line, no play. And the count is one and one now on Craig Anderson. Ashburn in the on-deck circle. Ground ball bounced slowly towards short. Murray Wills comes up with it. He fires to Gilliam for the force play on Pignatano that retires the side. In the home half of the fifth inning, New York, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Here are the five inning totals. Dodgers, five runs, five hits, and no errors. Mets, no runs, four hits, and two errors. My beer is Rheingold the dry beer. Yes, sir, that's the song that stops on the hit parade in New York again this year. Seems like it always is. Just like Ryan Gold is always New York's favorite beer year after year after year. Why? Because people like a dry beer best. Dry beers are lighter, more refreshing, because they let more of the taste through to you. And Ryan Gold is the extra dry beer. Extra dry for that extra refreshment. 
the bright, clean taste that people want in a glass of beer and get every time they order Rheingold. So why don't you give Rheingold a try? Order up or pour yourself a refreshing glass of Rheingold to enjoy along with the game. Now, the chances are you'll join the millions who sing out for Rheingold and say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. It's beer as beer should taste. Now the sixth inning, and the Dodgers send up John Roseboro to face Craig Anderson. Dodgers got one run in in the first inning when Maury Wills walked, stole second, took third on a ground ball, and scored on a base hit by Tommy Davis. They scored their second run in the third inning on a base hit by Maury Wills, a walk to Gilliam, a bunt hit by Willie Davis, and the run scored while a double play was being made with Wills crossing the plate. Maury Wills has two stolen bases in the game. Brown ball bounced down to first. Rod Keneal knocks it down, picks it up, and can't make a play. Ball hit toward the hole. Thronberry made a run on it, couldn't reach it. And Keneal coming in behind him, knocked it down but had trouble uh, in picking it up to make a play, and we'll wait for the official scoring. That brings up Pete Rickard. It's an error charge to Rod Keneal. A tough game in the field for the New York Mets. The error to Rod Keneal, the third charge against the Mets in the game, and now they look for the bunt as Pete Rickard steps in. Rickard hitting left-handed, he's 0 for 2. He's around to Bunt. Bunt's fair ball coming down off the hill. Craig Anderson, he fumbles it, picks it up, throws in time. Rickard out at first, and moving on to second goes Johnny Roseboro. Craig Anderson to Rod Keneal to get Pete Rickard on the sacrifice. From moving into potential scoring position, Johnny Roseboro, and that brings up Mari Wells. Mari walked, stole a base, later scored in the first. Beat on an infield hit, stole a base, later scored in the third, and went all the way to second while a rundown was going on between third and home in the fourth inning. So Mari has one for two officially. Anderson up in pitching position, delivers a drive hit over Keneal's head, a base hit to right center field. Rounding third and heading in is Johnny Roseboro. Wills going on to second with a double. Mari Wills with a line drive beyond the reach of Rod Keneal over toward the alley in right center. A run scoring double and the Dodgers now lead six to nothing. Mari Wills is 41st run batted in. in Baltimore and Robin Roberts won the pitching duel from Whitey Ford the Orioles beating the Yankees a 2-1 to one to sweep the five game series Brooks Robinson and Jim Gentile homered for the two Baltimore runs Tony Kubek homered for the Yankees Roberts the winner is 9-6 Ford the loser 13-7 breaking ball in the inside corner to Jim Gilliam a call strike been a fabulous series for third baseman Brooks Robinson of the Baltimore Orioles. Now Anderson in the set position. There goes Wells. The pitch is low. The peg to third. The slide. He steals third. That wasn't even close. He really stole it. So Maury Wells now has stolen three bases in this game. He now has 73 for the year. Seven shy of the all-time National League record of 80. Although Morey doesn't consider that he has a chance at Ty Cobb's all-time record of 96, he might well have a shot at it. Now the Mets have to bring the infield in and so you can see the effect of the stolen base. You always hate to bring your infield in because it's the old bromide goes and makes 400 hitters out of 200 hitters. But Wills, by stealing third, puts the 
Ultimatum up to the Mets. They have to bring the infield in to try and keep that run from scoring. Smash it hard. A base hit beyond the reach of Charlie Neal, and the run comes in. Well, that was a ground ball that was the infield back. Would have been an easy play for Charlie Neal, but with the infield drawn in, it was hit hard, and he was unable to make a play on it. So the stolen base by Maury Wills helped to build a run. The Mets were forced to bring the infield in, and the grounder went through for a base hit that otherwise would have been playable for Charlie Neal. I think we said that was Maury's 73rd stolen base. Beg your pardon, it is his 72nd. He has three in this game, 70, 71, and 72. Run batted in for Gilliam. The Dodgers now have a 7 to nothing lead. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Willie Davis, a ground ball hit foul down the first baseline. Tommy Davis, Johnny Roseboro, Willie Davis, Mari Wills, and Jim Gilliam now each have driven in a run. One scored on a double play and another scored on an error. Dodgers out in front, 7 nothing. Willie Davis has two for three. Now throw to first, not in time. In addition to the three stolen bases by Maury Wills, Johnny Roseboro has one. It's taken up high. One ball, one strike. One and one on Willie Davis. The end of seven is Houston two, Cincinnati one. That's the first game of a doubleheader in Cincinnati. Drive hit hard, but it's foul down the right field line, and that goes into the crowd. He really nailed that one. Willie Davis hitting third in the order, batting at 3.04 on the year. In the middle of that Dodger batting order, Willie Davis is hitting 3.04, Tommy Davis 3.42. Ron Fairley, 303, and Frank Howard, 306. One away, Anderson turns and throws over to first base. Johnny Roseboro, leading off here in the sixth inning, reached safely on an error charge to Rod Keneal. Pete Rickard butted him over. Maury Wells doubled to right center, scoring Roseboro. Inside and low, two and two now on Willie Davis. Then Maury stole third to help set up a run. They had to bring the infield in, and Gilliam slashed a ground ball beyond the reach of Neal for a run-scoring hit. So the Dodgers have two home here on the top of the sixth. They now lead seven to nothing. Greg Anderson up in pitching position. Delivers inside off the ribs. A full count, three and two on Willie Davis. Bob Moorhead has started to warm up now in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Dodgers have seven runs on seven hits. The Mets no runs, four hits. Pitch thrown over to first base to Mara Thronberry, not in time. The game at Cincinnati, Wally Post hit a home run in the seventh, nobody on. First run of the game off George Brunette, the left-hander pitching for the Colt 45. So they go to the eighth inning in Cincinnati with Houston out in front, two to one. They're in the eighth inning in Philadelphia. Giants leading the Phillies 6-4. to four. Mike McCormick has relieved Jack Sanford. Let's keep an eye on the runner. Gilliam on first, 3-2 and two on Willie Davis, one man down. Braves won and the Cubs won at the end of five and a half. Denny LaMaster against Dick Ellsworth. There goes the runner, the pitch. Ball four, it's outside, and Willie Davis walks. That's the fourth walk surrendered by Craig Anderson. Now coming on to hit is Tommy Davis, the cleanup batter. Tommy has one for three. He knocked in the first Dodger run of the afternoon with a single in the opening inning. 
Now, in addition to Bob Moorhead, lefty Bob Miller starts to warm up. Anderson up in pitching position delivers to Tommy Davis a drive right down the line going foul off the scoreboard a foul ball Cleveland six the Red Sox five at the end of six and a half innings first game of two in Cleveland Kansas City and the Minnesota Twins scoreless at the end of six innings Fisher against Crayley Tigers three Washington one at the end of five and a half Bunning pitching for Detroit. Hobart has replaced Dave Stenhouse. Now Tommy Davis waiting with two men on. The pitch to him by Anderson. Foul ball. Hit in behind the third base coach, Pete Razor. the infield hoping for a shot at the double play. The outfield is stride toward left against right-handed batting Tommy Davis. Now the pitch. Ground ball snagged by Craig Anderson. He throws to second. Throws the ball away out into center field. Gilliam is coming in to score. Willie Davis goes on to third and Tommy Davis is on first. Anderson had a double play in the making but he got confused. He looked for third. Then fired to second, trying to get a force play there on Willie Davis, and he threw the ball away into center field. It's been one of the toughest days in the field the Mets have had all year. Gilliam coming all the way in to score. An error charge to Craig Anderson. The Dodgers now have three runs home in the sixth inning. They have increased their lead to eight to nothing. The error charged to Anderson is, is the fourth error of the game charged to the Mets. Greg Anderson has hurt his own cause in this game this afternoon with a couple of fielding uh, plays that have gone bad for him. He threw that ball into center field way wide of Charlie Neal. Now Ron Fairley hitting with runners on first and third, one man down. Fairley 0 for 3. Pitch by Anderson, a line drive, base hit in the right field for Ron Fairley. Willie Davis in to score the ninth run of the game for the Dodgers, and Tommy Davis goes around to third. Now Casey's out of the bed. Manager Casey Stingle on the mound. Conferring now with pitcher Craig Anderson and catcher Joe Pignatano. Right-hander Bob Moorhead will be coming in the game. This will be all for Craig Anderson. Bob Moorhead on the mound for the Mets now. Bob making his 34th appearance of the year. Has been used occasionally as a starter, but mostly in relief by Casey. Moorhead from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Los Angeles, nine runs, eight hits, and no errors. New York, no runs, four hits, and four errors. Now the pitch by Moorhead. A high fly ball hit deep to left field, out by the bullpen, way out there. It's off the wall above the bullpen. Christopher pegging the ball back in. One run is in. Fairly digging for the plate to throw home. Safe at home plate. A booming, booming triple for Frank Howard. batting practice before the game today Howard hit a tremendous shot into the center field bleachers and that ball he has just hit struck the wall above the visiting bullpen in left center field 422 feet from home plate what a blast by 6 foot 7 inch Frank Howard now Duke Snyder is up 11 to nothing the Dodgers in front 
Pitch by Moorhead. Outside and high. It's ball one. That's one of the longest hits of the year here in the polo ground. What a smack that was. Snyder waiting. The pitch by Bob Moore hit a long drive. That's a home run if it's fair. It's foul in the upper deck. Out in the Dodger bullpen, the Dodger players gagging it up by pretending as though they are hiding under the roof of the dugout so as not to be injured by one of the long drives like the one Howard just hit. Oh, did he ever hit that? You can't hit a baseball any harder than that. Howard on third. Moorhead's pitch on the way. And it's taken low. Ball two, two and one. Anytime Howard gets a triple, you know he's really tagged one. He's not that fast a foot. And the Duke takes ball three, three and one. Two runs crossing Tommy Davis and Ron Fairley on Frank Howard's tripler turns to starting pitcher Craig Anderson. Howard on third, the responsibility now of relief pitcher Bob Moorhead. Snyder, the ninth man up in the inning. It's inside and low, ball four, he walks. Well, the Dodgers have batted around, and now they have Duke Johnny Roseboro coming up for the second time in the inning. They'll be talking about that triple hit by Frank Howard for a while. It was really a drive. Runners on first and third. Roseboro, the batter. And the pitch by Moore hit a swing and a foul tip. He went after a knuckleball. Before this year in the history of the polo grounds, Joe Adcock had been the only player to hit a ball into the center field bleachers. This year we have seen two belted into the center field bleachers. Ground ball past the mound in up the middle for a single to center field by Roseboro. Howard is in to score. Snyder going to third the slide. He's out at third. Joe Christopher taking the Felix Mantilla and Snyder is out at third. And now they... And uh, Roseboro, Johnny Roseboro, thinking that was the third out, walked off the bag. Canillo called for the ball and went over and tagged him, and the side is out. Johnny Roseboro, who was on second, he went to second on the throw to third, obviously thinking the third out had been made on Snyder at third, left second, started toward the dugout. Canillo called from the ball for the ball from Mantilla, and Canillo tags him out. For Roseboro, a single to center field, scoring Frank Howard. Snyder was out from Joe Christopher to Felix Mantilla. Mantilla then flipped the ball to Rod Keneal, and Keneal makes it a double play by tagging out Johnny Roseboro. So the side is out in the sixth inning. Seven runs, five hits, two errors, none left on. Seven runs, five hits, two errors, none left. At the end of five and a half, the score now, the Dodgers 12 and the New York Mets nothing. Now here are the changes for the Dodgers. Doug Camilli relieves Johnny Roseboro behind the plate. And Larry Burright will rest Jim Gilliam at second. Richie Ashburn is up against Pete Rickard, last of the sixth inning. Ball one, it's a five. Here's the wind up pitch thrown to Ashburn. A ground ball slowly hit. Coming in is Burr right. He digs it out of the dirt. Pegs to Fairley in time for the out. One away, nobody on in the last half of the sixth inning. good crowd watching today's game paid attendance 26,818 
And the Mets now in home attendance this year have drawn 867,616. Here's the wind up pitch to Charlie Neal. A drive hit hard to right center field. Running hard is Davis. And he drops the ball at right center field. Neal turning around first. Holds up there. Willie Davis finally caught up with it. Had it in his glove and it popped out. It'll be an error charge to Willie Davis. Ball has been hard to catch in this game today. Ball was really hit by Charlie Neal. Searing line drive to right center, but Willie Davis, with that blinding speed, got over there and had it in his glove, and then it popped out for an error. They go to the ninth inning in Cincinnati now, with Houston leading Cincinnati 2-1 to one in the first game of a doubleheader. Pitch to Mantilla, taken inside and lowest, ball one. They're in the last of the ninth inning in Philadelphia. The Giants lead the Phillies 7-4. to four. Now Pete Rickard kicks the leg, delivers. Inside and low, ball two, two and nothing. Dodgers have the can of ball club to make you look bad. Pitching to an O. That's over for a call strike. They force a lot of mistakes defensively with that tremendous speed of theirs. Fielders trying to hurry, knowing that they have to do so because of the running speed. In their haste, oftentimes make errors. Now the 2-1 pitch. And Mantilla lets it break inside in low ball three, three and one. Play where Craig Anderson threw the ball into center field. Craig obviously... Had it on his mind, the Dodger running speed, and first looked to third, and then when he realized he had to throw to second and really throw hard, he threw it away. It's outside, ball four, Mantilla one. And that is the first walk surrendered by Pete Rickard in the game. Now the Mets have runners on first and second, one down. Their cleanup batter, Frank Thomas, stepping in. Thomas singled the left field in the second and took a call third strike in the fourth inning. A high pop fly to shallow left center. Out goes Wills. In comes Willie Davis. And it's Willie Davis who puts it away for the out. Now there are two away, and the batter will be Joe Christopher. In the game in Philadelphia, a single afternoon game. Giants, seven runs, seven hits, no errors. Phillies, four runs, 11 hits, and no errors. Sanford, the winner. Relieved by McCormick in the seventh, Bolin in the eighth, Mahaffey, the loser, Owens in the sixth, and Balshin in the eighth inning. Home runs by Orlando Cepeda, his 30th of the year. It came with a man on in the first. And by Felipe Lou in the third with the bases empty. Cepeda now has homered, has six home runs in his last six ball games. Joe Christopher facing Pete Rickard. He lets it go. It's off the outside corner. One ball and no strikes. Christopher, 0 for 2, has taken a call third strike and grounded out second to first. Joe hitting it at 196. Ground ball bounced toward the hole. Wills to his right. Throws to second. Force play on Mantilla to retire the side. Side out in the sixth inning. Mets no runs, no hits, one error, two left on. Now six innings complete. The score, the Los Angeles Dodgers 12 and the New York Mets nothing. And now here to take you the rest of the way, play-by-play, play, Lindsey Nelson. All right, Robert, and six inning totals are for the Dodgers, 12 runs on 10 hits and one Dodger error. For the Mets, no runs, only four hits, and there have been four Met errors. This game winding up the current homestand of the New York Mets. They'll be coming back here on the 10th of September for a Monday night game against the Milwaukee Braves. That will mark the final appearance of the Braves here at the Polo Grounds this season. And then after three off days, the Cincinnati Reds will be coming in. That'll be Friday night, September 14th, Saturday afternoon, September 15th, Sunday afternoon, September 16th. The Reds, of course, led by Frank Robinson. 
Beta Penson, Joey J, Bob Perky, Gordon Coleman, Eddie Casco, Gene Freeze, and they'll be here for those final three games. Tickets are now on sale for those on all future games of the Mets here at the Polo Ground. They're getting a pitching change now for the New York Mets. The left-handed Bob Miller, R.G. Miller, has come on down in relief of Bob Moorhead. He will be facing Pete Rickard, so Moorhead actually worked to only three batters. Frank Howard uh, led off against Moorhead with a triple. That scored a couple of runs. Both of those, of course, were charged against Anderson. So Moorhead worked two-thirds of an inning. which he gave up one run on two hits. Struck on none, walked none, and now it is Bob Miller. Well, it's certainly been an exciting season, and the Brewers of Rheingold Extra Dry are more than happy to bring you all the action. Rheingold just hopes that you enjoy these broadcasts half as much as they enjoy bringing them to you, and I'll just add this. You'll enjoy the games even more with a fine cold glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. It's beer as beer should taste, and dry tells you why. And Pete Rickard comes up now. That's left. Facing Bob Miller. And a pitch is in there for a call strike. Rickard is nothing but two and a walk, and nothing but two and a sacrifice this afternoon. This pitch is in there for a call, strike two. The Dodgers leading by a score of 12 to nothing. Batting in the top half of the seventh inning. Two strike pitch is high for ball. Down toward third, Mantilla is coming on, makes the catch in foul territory. The record has popped out. The Mantilla at third, there is one away. That will bring up Darrell Spencer, who is going to bat for Maury Wills. Darrell Spencer is coming up to bat for Maury Wills. for the season. Two home runs. At least pitches low for ball. So Murray Wills had a fine afternoon. He had two base hits and he stole three bases and scored three runs. Drew one walk. Was on on the field his choice. Here's a swing and a high foul ball coming back. Signatani gives it a run. He's near the dugout and there's no play. It's in the stand. So that brings him back. One and one to count to Darrell Spencer at the plate. And Larry Burright is now on deck for the Dodgers. He came on to play second base last inning in place of Jim Gilliam. Pitch is high and away. Two balls and one strike. With one man out and nobody on base. Bob Miller works the pitch, swung on, and missed it 2-2. Two -two. Darrell Spencer is one of several capable infield replacements that the Los Angeles Dodgers have. We have Andy Carey as well, who has not been in action uh, in this series. It's 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung out and missed. Strike three. Struck him out. Credit a strikeout to Bob Miller. Two away 
away. Nobody on base. And second baseman Burright coming up for his first time. Jim Gilliam today with one for three and a walk. is low and away. Bob Miller has a record this season of two victories and one loss. This is his 13th game appearance. Pitch is tight and it's 2-0. Oh. Sixth inning was the big one today for the Dodgers. They got seven runs on five hits. In that Dodgers got one in the first, one in the third, three in the fourth, and seven in the sixth. Here's a swing and a miss. It's two and one. To Burrite. Early in the season, the Dodgers were hopeful that Larry Burrite would be able to step in there and take over at second base so they could leave Jim Gilliam at third and Tommy Davis in left field. Pitch is low for a ball, but it didn't quite work out that way. Burrite was red out early in the season with the bat. And then slumped to a batting average right now of 205. That's low and he walked him. First ball given up by Bob Miller. Then Burrite to first with two men out, and Willie Davis is coming up. Willie is two for three in a walk today. Got the two base hits without getting the ball out of the infield. Placed a butt over to the left side of the pitcher, and there was no play on him as he beat it out for a base hit in the third inning. Did a ground ball deep to short in the top of the fourth, and there's no play on him there as he beat it out for a base hit. Bringing a ground ball foul on the first baseline. One strike count. The Mets have Ray Davio throwing in the bullpen now. It's a swing and a ground ball to Keneal at second. Up with it, he's going to Thornberry in time for the out. That retires the side and so in the top half of the seventh. Now just got no runs on one hit. No runs on no hit. No errors and one left. And so at the end of six and a half innings of play, the score is the Dodgers 12 and the Mets nothing. You know, when a game gets exciting, it's good to relax with mild Sir Walter Raleigh smoking tobacco. Here's a tobacco with real aroma and a good natural flavor that comes from an exclusive blend of choice Kentucky Burleys, extra aged to their peak of mildness. Sir Walter Raleigh is known as the brand of grand aroma. Smells grand, packs right, smokes sweet, can't bite, and fresh. Sir Walter Raleigh has kept 44% fresher in its new pouch pack. You can feel the tobacco is kept fresh and moist by the Sir Walter Raleigh pouch pack. And for home or office, get Sir Walter Raleigh in the exclusive knob top vacuum pack canisters. Defensive changes now for the Dodgers as Tim Harkness has come in at first base and Darrell Spencer is playing shortstop. Here is the pitch in there for a call strike to Marv Thornberry. That's batting in the bottom half of the seventh. Rickard winds and fires a swing and a miss. It's a two-strike count. And the pitch in, it swung out and missed strike three. He struck him out. That is strikeout number seven. For Rickard. He has not worked more than seven innings this season, incidentally. And here is Rod Camille coming up. He hit into a double play and gone it out short to first. Swinging a high fly ball to right field. Duke Snyder drifts back. And Duke makes the catch. Two away. Nobody on. So the Twins have defeated the Kansas City Athletics one to nothing on a no hitter by Kralik. Kralik has thrown a no hitter against the Kansas City A's as Minnesota got one run on eight hits and no errors 
Kansas City got no runs, no hits, and one error. So another no-hitter in the American League. Here's the pitch to Pignatano, and it's in there for a call strike. In the American League, we've had three no-hitters and one in the National this season. Here's a swing and a foul ball back. Felix Belinsky and Wilson in the American and Sandy Koufax in the National. Big year for no-hit games. Strike pitch swung on it. It's a ground ball to third. Taken deep by Tommy Davis. Up and overhand to first. Harkness can't hold on. The ball rolls away. Pignatana's on his way to second. Harkness up with it. Makes no play as Pignatana dies in on his chest. Sliding in with a head first slide. He saved it second. It is an error on the throw on Tommy Davis as he pulled Harkness down the line and over, and as Harkness is making the shift, couldn't hang on. Now we're going to get Jim Hickman batting for Bob Miller with Ray Davio throwing in the bullpen for the Mets. to the right-hand batter, swung on, it's a high pop to short and left. Frank Howard is called for it, shading his eyes with the glove, comes on in, and Big Frank makes the catch to retire the side as Hickman pops out. And in the bottom half of the seventh, the Mets got no runs on no hits, there was one Dodger error, and there was one man left on base, and so at the end of seven full innings of play, score is the Dodgers 12 and the Mets nothing. San Francisco Giants defeated the Philadelphia Phillies 7-4, Jack Sanford got his 18th victory of the season against six losses. Art Mahaffey took his 11th loss against 17 wins. Orlando Cepeda hit a homer in the first of one on his 30th of the season and his sixth in six games. Philippe Palou also a homer for the Giants. In the first game of a doubleheader, the Houston Colts 45 defeated the Cincinnati Reds 2-1 to one as Brunette got the victory and Maloney took the loss while he post homered in the seventh with nobody on for the Reds. The Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cardinals in the first game of the doubleheader at the end of eight innings of play. It is St. Louis 6 and Pittsburgh 5. Burton has homered and so has White in the ballgame. So that is the way scores are going elsewhere and we're going to have Tommy Davis coming up here. In that no-hit game that we've been talking about, Jack Kralik Retired 25 men in a row before walking the second batter in the ninth inning. That's all that prevented him from having a perfect game. Davio's pitch is swung on and has a high fly ball. Deep to center field. It's taken by Joe Christopher for the out. There's one away. Ray Davio, the fourth Met pitcher of the afternoon. Coming up is Jim Harkness, the first baseman. Harkness is up for his first time in this ball game. Swinging a foul ball, back and out of play. Angels have missed some excellent opportunities to tighten up the American League race while the Baltimore Orioles were sweeping a five-game set with the Yankees. The Angels have had their problems with the White Sox. But the pitch for us, a high fly ball down the line and right, going deep, way back there, and it is in the stand for a home run. Just getting into the first row of the lower deck. And for Tim Harkness, it is a home run, his second of this season. Makes the score here, the Dodgers 13 and the Mets nothing. And it brings up big Frank Howard. Last time up, he hit a tremendous triple that hit on the wall above the bullpen on the fly, 422 feet away from home plate. Ray 
Davio with the pitch. Swung on, a little nubber, right back to the mound. Taken by Davio, and he fires it on over to Thornberry. That ball hit right on the end of the bat and dribbled out there to Davio. Two men out, nobody on base, and that brings up Duke Snyder. The Duke is grounded out to first base on assisted. On on the field is Joyce, grounded out to second base and walk. ground ball and it's going to Camille at second he plays over to Thornberry in time and Snyder is out second to first in the top half of the eighth inning the Los Angeles Dodgers got one run on one hit the homer by Tim Harkness no errors and none left the end of seven and a half innings the score is the Dodgers 13 and the Mets nothing let's listen now to a trio of your favorite performers
youngster, born in Mineola, lives in Floral Park, Long Island. Bring a foul ball, packing over the rooftop. It's one and one. Friday night, 
Saturday afternoon, September 15th. Sunday afternoon, September 16th. Tickets are now on sale for all future games of the Mets at the advanced ticket window here at the Polo Grounds, at Grand Central Station, at Pennsylvania Station. You may make ticket reservations at any Howard Close store in the greater New York area, or you may order tickets by mail. Addressing your request to Ticket Manager Polo Grounds, New York 39, New York. Right now, before we go to the ninth inning, we pause for station identification. You are tuned to WGY's Schenectady, or New York Mets station. The time right now, 5 p.m., the temperature 83 degrees. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Tanner and Bob Murphy at the Polo Grounds. And say, do you know why Rheingold tastes so good? Well, dry tells you why. It tells you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costly away for a flavor that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. But why not find that out for yourself? Enjoy a cold glass of Rheingold right now along with the game. Doug Camilli is coming up now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball. It's going through for a base hit into center field. So it's going to be Wally Moon coming up now to bat for Feed Rickard. Wally Moon, the old Texas Aggie, has come out. left-hand batter. Has not played a great deal this year for the Los Angeles Dodgers. This is only his 78th game appearance. He is hitting 258. He has four home runs. Ball for a ball. Wally Moon was a big man in the attack for the Dodgers during their four years when they played their home games at the Los Angeles Coliseum with the short left field wall. He mastered the opposite field stroke home runs over there with some regularity. Pitcher's in there for a call strike. Ray Davio is the pitcher for the New York Mets. Bill Ortega continues to throw in the bullpen. Here's a pitch swung on and missed. It's one and two. in there for a call, strike three. As Wally Moon is called out on strike, that's the first strikeout for Davio. One away, a runner at first, and Darrell Spencer coming up. Dodgers got off to an early lead this afternoon. They scored one run in the top half of the first and have led throughout. They got another in the third, three in the fourth, seven in the sixth, and one in the eighth. Mets got their three runs in the bottom of the eighth, and it is now the Dodgers 13 and the Mets 3. Bringing a ground ball to the right side. Taken by Camille, and he can't hold on to it. Both hands are safe. Runners at first and second. Camille had it squared, was turning to try to go for the double play, and in so doing was handcuffed for the ball. An error on Camille at second base. That gives the Dodgers runners at first and second with Larry Burright, the second baseman, coming up. the fastball inside. Ball one. We're in the top half of the ninth inning of the final game to be played here this season by the Los Angeles Dodgers. They started the day with a two and a half game lead in the National League race over the second place Giants. Then there for a call strike to Burrow. The Giants have defeated the Philadelphia Phillies this afternoon 7-4 to, to keep pace. And in the first game of a doubleheader, the Cincinnati Reds have fallen off the pace, being defeated by the Houston Colts, 45s, 2-1. That pitch is high. 2-1. and one. Now 
Cincinnati Reds, however, are still very much in the running, and they have a three-game series coming up against these Dodgers in Los Angeles. Swing and a foul ball coming back. You may recall that it was in August of last year that the Cincinnati Reds went into Los Angeles, played a three-game set with the Dodgers. The Reds swept the set, went into first place, stayed there, and won the National League pennant. Two and two. The Detroit Tigers have defeated the Washington Senators 5-3 in the first game of a doubleheader. Jim Bunning got the win, his 14th picture of the season, and Dave Stenhouse took the loss. He is now 10-10. Ten ten. It's to the right swung on. A ground ball to third, taken by Mantilla. He goes over to Keneal for one. The relay to first is not in time. With Camille moving on to third on the play. Runners first and third. Two men out now, and Willie Davis coming up. Willie Davis has grounded out. Single, single. Neither of those uh, hits got out of the infield. Walked and grounded out. Norm Cash today hit his 34th home run of the season. For the Detroit Tigers, Billy Bruton hit one. Steve Boros hit one. Swing and a foul tip. Back into the glove of Joe Pignatano. Norm Cash has now moved into a tie with Hyman Killebrew of the Minnesota Twins for the home run lead in the American League. It's a swing and a fly ball deep to right. Going uh, right to the pole and it is a home run for Willie Davis. Rounding off the facade right at the foul pole. And it is for right. Coming across now followed by Willie Davis. Millie having scored, of course, a three-run homer. That one was popped down right down the right field line, uh, just staying fair and just getting there. For Willie Davis, it is his 21st home run of this season. Makes the score here now. Dodgers 15 and the Mets 3. Swing a foul ball off the bat of Davis. Beg your pardon, it is 16 to 3. The Dodgers 16 and the Mets 3. He's got to count the home run. Tommy Davis drills one foul. One hop to the wall on the left field line. It's a two strike count to him. Nobody on. Breaking ball swung on and fouled off by Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis is one for five today. He hasn't hit his batting average any. Starting the dread today, he trailed Frank Robinson of Cincinnati by three points in the National League batting race. A swing and a miss struck him out. Davio got two strikeouts in the inning and in the top half of the night. The Dodgers got three runs on two hits, one error, and none left. And at the end of eight and one half innings of play, the score is the Dodgers 16 and the Mets 3. Now, a popular question put to music by none other than Guy Lombardo. Who is the girl who? Be the girl Miss Wrangle, 63. She be a beaut, she be really cute, the only girl for me. Carol Loretta, Eileen Beverly, is Prue or Chris the one girl who will be that famous girl, that charming girl Miss Wrangle, 63. This is Guy Lombard. Who will be Miss Rheingold 1963? Your vote may decide who'll have the fame and fortune of representing Rheingold Extra Dry, the beer that gets most New Yorkers' votes. So vote now. 
They're all so charming, I'm in such a fix. Yes, I'll just have to vote for all six. Who is the girl who be the girl Miss Ryan goes six to three? New pitcher in the ballgame now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. It is Phil Ortega. Coming out in relief of young Pete Rickard, who pitched eight innings, his longest stint of the season. He gave up three runs on seven hits. He struck out eight, and he walked one. So he keeps his record intact of having struck out one man per inning pitch this season. Rod Keneal will be first up to lead off for the New York Mets. Pete Rickard now has pitched 54 innings in the National League uh, this season, and he has struck out 54 men. So Ortega has been brought on to finish up. Keneal has hit into a double play, grounded out, and flies to center in the ballgame this afternoon. Tomorrow is an off day for the Mets, and then they will be going to Philadelphia for a twinite doubleheader. On Tuesday, against the Phils from Connie Mack Stadium, we'll be on the air from Philadelphia at 6 p.m. Tuesday evening. We'll bring you both games of that doubleheader, and it'll be radio coverage only. Ortega into the windup, and the pitch is a fastball, taken high at the ball one. be a four-game series against the Phils in Philadelphia. Twinighter on Tuesday and a night game Wednesday and a night game Thursday. Pitch is high and tight. It's out to 3-0. and oh. 3-0 pitch is high. Ball four. He walked him. So Ortega walks to Neal. Second walk, the Mets have been able to draw today, and here comes Choo Choo Coleman up. The bat for Joe Pignatano, and Gene Woodling has come out to the on deck circle as the prospective pinch hitter for Ray Davio. Ortega's pitch in there for a call strike. The Mets have had a bad day defensively, committing five errors. As a result, 12 of the 16 runs scored by the Dodgers this afternoon have been unearned. Pitch to Choo Choo. Slow breaking ball, and it's one and one. It's a ground ball taken by Harkness at first. He's going across to Spencer. He's out and no relay. So they got the lead man. As Keneal was forced, three to six if you're scoring. Harkness to Spencer. Choo Choo is on. At first and here's Gene Woodling. championship of New York City this season. Frank Thomas of the Mets has 29 and Roger Maris of the Yankees has 29. Swing and a high foul ball. Back and out of play. Two strike count. One 
and two to Woodling.
Vega checks and deals 3-0, and, oh, and it's low. He walked him, and the bases are loaded. He's one man out. Bill Ortega has walked three men here in the bottom of the ninth. Charlie Neal doubled his last time up down the right field line. And before that, he was on an error by Willie Davis on a fly ball to right center. First two times up, he grounded out and was called out on strike. Ortega is in no immediate danger. He still has a 13-game cushion, 13-run cushion. Pitch is low for ball one to Charlie Neal. Angeles, the Angels got three runs in the bottom of the first against the White Sox. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike. Charlie Neal, it's one and one. With the Angels coming up to bat in the bottom of the second, it is Los Angeles three and the White Sox nothing. Bauman against John Lee. Coleman is at third, Rick Hersher is at second, and Richie Ashman is at first for the Mets. Ortega winds and fires, and this one gets by Camille, and coming in the score is Chuchu Coleman, Hersher goes to third base, and Ashman moves to second. The low pitch. It is a wild pitch choice against Ortega. Makes the score now 16 to 4, the Dodgers leading. Two and two is the count to Neal. Underneath, Hersher is tagged at third base. Will he make the catch? Hersher tags, comes down the line. The throw instead is going to third, and Hersher comes across the plate with a run. Charlie Neal, a sacrifice by the center, and a run batted in. With two men out, Ashburn is at second, and Felix Manti is coming up. The score is the Dodgers 16 in the Mets 5.
and win the series here, two games to one. In the bottom half of the ninth, the Mets got two runs on no hit. No errors and one man left. Keep in mind that the Milwaukee Braves will be here on the night of September 10th, and then the Cincinnati Reds will be coming in on the night of September 14th, the afternoon of September 15th, and the afternoon of September 16th. Looking down on the field right now, General Manager Buzzy Bavese of the Dodgers just walking off, talking to Manager Walter Austin as they head slowly for the clubhouse in center field. We'll be back in a moment with a final summary and totals. Right now, the final score of the game, the Dodgers 16 and the Mets 5. The pipe tobacco for relaxing in a man's world is Sir Walter Raleigh. Whether you're out at the ballpark or listening to our broadcast at home, you'll enjoy Sir Walter from the very first pipe bowl. Here's a tobacco with real aroma and a good natural flavor. Sir Walter's flavor comes from a special blend of choice Kentucky Burley tobaccos, extra aged to their peak of mildness. Sir Walter Raleigh is known as the brand of Grand Aroma. It's kept fresh, too. 44% fresher in the new pouch pack. You'll like Sir Walter's pouch pack. And when you're at home or at the office, you'll like Sir Walter Raleigh and the exclusive knob top vacuum pack canisters. The humidor canisters keep Sir Walter Raleigh factory fresh. Get Sir Walter Raleigh in the new pouch pack or in the exclusive knob top canisters. Large economy size or half canister. Sir Walter Raleigh smells grand, packs right, smokes sweet, can't bite. So relax in a man's world with Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco. Well, here at the Polo Grounds, the Los Angeles Dodgers have made their final appearance of this season and perhaps their final appearance ever at the Polo Grounds, defeating the New York Mets by a score of 16-5. to The Dodgers were out into the lead early, getting one run in the top half of the first inning as Maury Wills. Walk, stole second, moved on on an infield out and was singled home by Tommy Davis. And the Dodgers from then on were never headed as they got one in the first, one in the third, three in the fourth, seven in the sixth, one in the eighth, and three in the ninth inning. Maury Wills this afternoon stole three bases, number 70, 71, and 72. The National League record is 80, and that seems well within his reach at this moment. Willie Davis had a three-run homer this afternoon for the Dodgers. And Tim Harkness had a home run also for the Dodgers. Frank Howard had a tremendous triple that hit the wall on the fly over the bullpen at the 422-foot sign here this afternoon. For the New York Mets, Joe Christopher had a two-run homer in the bottom half of the eighth inning as the Mets got three runs in the eighth and two in the ninth. Here are the final totals. For the Dodgers, 16 runs on 13 hits and two errors. For the Mets, five runs on seven hits and five errors. The winner is Pete Rickard, who now has won three and lost three. He went for eight innings in this ballgame. The loser is Craig Anderson, who now has won none and lost 13. So that Craig Anderson has lost 13 straight ball games. And this is the longest losing streak by a National League pitcher since Bob McCall of the Cubs lost 13 in a row in 1948. Final score once again, the Cubs, the uh, Dodgers 16, and the New York Mets 5. And that just about brings us up to the end of the line. This broadcast came to you through the courtesy of Liebman Breweries, Orange, New Jersey, and Brooklyn, New York, and the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. It's authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Right now, I'd like to remind you to enjoy fine coal Rheingold. Rheingold Extra Dry. Those two little words, Extra Dry, tell you why Rheingold is preferred by more New Yorkers than any other beer. Enjoy a nice cold, ice cold glass of good Rheingold Extra Dry. We'll be on the air from Gunnymack Stadium in Philadelphia at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, radio only, and we hope you'll join us then. Now, this is Lindsey Nelson saying so long for Bob Murphy, for Ralph Kiner, our statistician Joe McDonald, our engineer Joe Burnham, and our producer Joe Gallagher. And for Viceroy, Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. That's right. Final score again, Los Angeles Dodgers 16, New York Mets 5. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.